Hello students, welcome to the lecture on sexual reproduction in flowering plant and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Describe the structure of flower, discuss about development of male and female gametophytes, explain about pollination, describe about fertilization of flower. Let's start with the lecture. In sexual reproduction, a new individual is produced by the combining of material from two parents. In plants, as in animals, a sperm moves towards an egg. Fertilization occurs when the egg and sperm nuclei, which are the central part of each cell, unite to start development of the offspring. By repeated cell division, the fertilized egg grows from a single cell into a many-celled embryo. Parts of flower along with their function are The stamen contains the male part of the flower. It produces pollen, a yellow powdery substance. Pollen is produced in the top of the stamen in a structure called the anther. The pistil contains the female part of the flower. The top of the pistil is called the stigma. When a pollen grain reaches the pistil, it sticks to the surface of the stigma. The stigma produces a sugar that is used by the pollen to grow a tube. The pollen tube digs its way down through the style, allowing delivery of the sperm down to the ovary. This is the enlarged part of the pistil where the female sex cells, eggs, are produced. The eggs are fertilized by the sperm from the pollen tube. The transfer of the pollen from anther to the stigma is called pollination. Flowers are the key reproductive organs in flowering plants. A flower, which is a reproductive shoot of angiosperms, consists of four whorls of modified leaves known as the floral organs, the sepals, petals, stamens and carpels, which attach to a part of the stem called the receptacle. Stamens and carpels are the reproductive organs. Sepals are sterile and leafy and protect the unopened floral bud. Petals are sterile, brightly colored and serve as attractants for insects and other pollinators. Stamens are made of a stalk known as a filament and a terminal structure called the anther. The anther is made of chambers known as microsporangium pollen sacs which produce pollen. The carpel is composed of a stigma at the top for capturing pollen, a long and slender structure in the middle called a style and an ovary at the base. Depending on the plant species, one or more ovules can be present within an ovary. The pistil is the term for a single carpel or fused carpels. Flowers are usually single but sometimes they are arranged in a clustered pattern known as the inflorescence. A flower with all the four basic floral organs is a complete flower. An incomplete flower lacks one or more of the basic floral organs, sometimes the stamens or carpels, thus forming a unisexual flower. A flower with all the four basic floral organs is a complete flower. Grass flowers lack petals. Some may lack reproductive structures entirely and be sterile. Others may lack either stamens or carpels and are called unisexual flowers. The flowers may be born singly or in clusters called inflorescences. Some inflorescences are arranged as many small flowers that produce a head which appears as a single flower such as Queen Anne's Lace or Hydrangea. Others, such as members of the composite group. Much of the great diversity of flowers has evolved to accommodate the plant's need to disperse its pollen and successfully complete sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction requires the fusion of an egg from the ovary with a sperm from a pollen grain. Fertilization, in turn, requires that the egg and sperm must meet. The two cells may derive from the same plant 
leading to selfing or from different plants leading to outcrossing. The cell containing generative nucleus is small and attached to the wall. It later loses contact with the pollen wall and floats freely in the cytoplasm of the larger vegetative or tube cell. During the germination of the pollen grain, the pollen tube develops through a germ pore. The vegetative nucleus moves first into the pollen tube which is followed by the generative cell. The generative cell divides mitotically forming two male nucleus or sperms. Pollen grain microspore transferred to the stigma of the flower develops into male gametophyte. Its nucleus divides to form a vegetative nucleus, tube nucleus and a generative nucleus. This division takes place even before the pollen reaching the stigma. The division results in two unequal cells. The megaspore is the first cell of the female gametophyte. The lowermost megaspore enlarges and produces an embryo sac. In all angiosperms, development of female gametophyte is endosporous, that is, within the megaspore. In typical case, the functional lowermost megaspore gives rise to eight nucleate embryo sac. Out of these eight nuclei, the uppermost three nuclei towards the micropyle form egg apparatus containing middle egg cell and on its either side and two synergies. The lower three nuclei towards the calyza's end of the embryo sac are called antipodal. Two nuclei present at the center of the embryo sac fuse forming secondary nucleus or definite nucleus. Pollination is important in horticulture because most plant fruits will not develop if the ovules are not fertilized. The pollination process as interaction between flower and vector was first addressed in the 18th century by Christian Conrad Sprengel. The video here will show us different types of pollination. Pollination. Observe the diagrammatic representation of pollination carefully. The transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or of another flower is called pollination. Self and cross pollination. Pollination is of two kinds, self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination Self-pollination is defined as the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to stigma of the same flower or of another flower on the same plant. Cross-pollination Cross-pollination is defined as the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower on one plant to the stigma of a flower on another plant of the same species. Types of cross-pollination Different mechanisms or modes of cross-pollination are listed here. Entomophily Pollination which is brought about by insects is known as entomophily or insect pollination. Anemophily. When pollination is through wind, it is known as anemophily or wind pollination. Hydrophily. Phenomenon by which the flowers are pollinated by water is called as hydrophily or water pollination. Ornithophily. The phenomenon where flowers are pollinated by birds is called ornithophily or bird pollination. Chiropterophily. Pollination carried by bats is known as chiropterophily or bat pollination. Comparison of insect and wind pollinated flowers. A comparison of insect and wind pollinated flowers has been made here. Insect pollinated flowers are large and showy. Even if they are small, they occur in clusters, which make them conspicuous. 
wind-pollinated flowers are small, inconspicuous, and they are usually not colored and are often green. Anthers of insect-pollinated flowers are small and remain within the flower firmly attached to their filament, whereas the anthers of wind-pollinated flowers are large, protrude out of the flowers and are loosely attached to the filament so that they are easily moved by wind. Pollen grains of insect-pollinated flowers are sticky or spiny and are produced in smaller quantities as compared to wind-pollinated flowers, while the pollen grains of wind-pollinated flowers are smooth and light so that they can be easily carried by the wind. The pollen grains of the wind-pollinated flowers are produced in very large quantities to compensate loss in transit. Stigmas of insect-pollinated flowers are sticky, flat or club-shaped, whereas stigmas of wind-pollinated flowers are large, feathery and hang out of the flower. Insect-pollinated flowers are generally scented and produce nectar. China rose, petunia, salvia, pea, sunflower have insect-pollinated flowers. Wind-pollinated flowers are not scented and do not produce nectar. Plants like maize, rice, wheat, palms, pine, etc. have wind-pollinated flowers. Pollination management is a branch of agriculture that seeks to protect and enhance present pollinators and often involves the culture and addition of pollinators in monoculture situations such as commercial fruit orchards. The largest managed pollination event in the world is in Californian almond orchards where nearly half, about 1 million hives of the US honeybees are trucked to the almond orchards each spring. New York's apple crop requires about 30,000 hives. Maine's blueberry crop uses about 50,000 hives each year. The ecological and financial importance of natural pollination by insects to agricultural crops, improving their quality and quantity, becomes more and more appreciated and has given rise to new financial opportunities. The vicinity of a forest or wild grasslands with native pollinators near agricultural crops such as apples, almonds or coffee can improve their yield by about 20%. The benefits of native pollinators may result in forest owners demanding payment for their contribution in the improved crop results, a simple example of the economic value of ecological services. We will study pollination, formation of pollen grains and formation of an ovule sac through this video. The pollen grain has tube nucleus and generative nucleus. The tube nucleus stimulates growth of pollen tube and it eventually disintegrates. In generative nucleus, the oospore is formed by fusion of sperm nucleus and egg cell. After a certain period, the oospore develops into an embryo. The second sperm nucleus fuses with the secondary definitive nucleus, resulting in the triploid nucleus called endosperm nucleus. Mature ovule. Parts of a mature ovule are integuments. Integuments have two layers of protective coating. Micropyle. Micropyle has a minute pore or opening through which the pollen tube enters. Nucellus. Nucellus is the nutritive tissue lining the interior of the ovule. Embryo sac. Embryo sac is in the center of the nucellus. It contains the egg cell, antipodal cells and polar nuclei, definitive. Synergids are the cells flanking the egg cell. Fertilization. Fertilization involves the fusion of male and female gametes. 
The steps involved in fertilization are germination of pollen grains, growth of pollen grain into tube formation, entry of the pollen tube into ovule and embryo sac, discharge of male gametes into embryo sac, double fertilization. Changes taking place after fertilization. Observe carefully as to what changes take place in the flower after fertilization. Sepals. Sepals usually wither away but in some cases as in tomato, brinjal, etc. These remain attached to the fruit are persistent. Petals, stamens, style and stigma wither away. Ovary. Ovary forms into fruit. Ovules. Ovules form the seeds. Egg cell fuses with the male gamete to become zygote. Endosperm nucleus becomes the endosperm. Integuments become the seed coat. The entire ovary forms the fruit. The ovary wall forms the pericarp, skin of the fruit. Claystogamy. This condition helps in self-pollination as these Claystogamous flowers never open. These flowers are small, colorless, odorless and do not produce nectar. The video here will show seed development in plants. Pictures show transverse section of a young anther, enlarged view of one microsporangium showing wall layers, a mature dehyzed anther. This picture shows a dissected flower of hibiscus showing pistil. Other floral parts have been removed. Multicapillary syncarpus pistil of palaware. A multicapillary Apocarpus gymnosium of Michelin, 
a diagrammatic view of a typical anthropous ovule. Heteromorphy flowers. The flower is concerned with the function of sexual reproduction in angiosperms. The video here will show us the formation of fruit from a flower. A fruit consists of seeds enclosed in a mature ovary of a flowering plant. When the eggs in the ovules of an apple flower have been fertilized, the petals, stamens, and upper portion of the pistils wither and fall away. The walls of the ovary in an apple harden, and the supporting stem becomes fleshy and grows up and around the ovary as the seeds develop inside each ovule. The remains of the sepals can be seen at the end of the fruit. The fruit is attached to the plant at the opposite or stem end of the fruit. The pasteurization of the fruit from flower of a tomato is explained in this picture here. In angiosperms, the fruits are usually formed after the process of fertilization. In certain plants, however, the fruits are formed without the act of fertilization. Such fruits are called parthenocarpic fruits and the phenomenon is known as parthenocarpy. Parthenocarpic fruits are either seedless or contain empty or non-viable seeds. In these fruits, the stimulus for fruit growth is provided by the tissue of the ovary wall itself. Natural parthenocarpy is found in oranges, cucumbers and seedless grapes. Parthenocarpy is of great commercial value. Seedless tomatoes may be produced parthenocarpically in greenhouses. Parthenocarpic fruits are used in the preparation of jams and fruit juices. World's best varieties of pineapples, banana and grapes are parthenocarpic. A gamospermy is a modified form of reproduction where seeds are formed without the fusion of gametes. In this method, a diploid cell of the nucleus develops into an embryo. The genetic constitution of the embryo will be identical to the parent. An organism that reproduces by apomixis is called apomic. Parthenogenesis, the development of an unfertilized ovum into a fully developed haploid organism. It is a special type of monoparental reproduction found in a number of invertebrates like aphids, rotifers and honeybees and a few vertebrates like domestic turkey among birds and among the lizards species of lacerate. Natural parthenogenesis. Here the parthogenesis is regular and characteristic feature of life cycle. Example honeybees. In honeybees apicindica the queen produces two types of eggs the fertilized and the unfertilized. The unfertilized eggs develop into drones parthenogenetically. So the drones are haploid. Drones form gametes by mitosis and not by meiosis. Artificial parthenogenesis. The eggs of some normally sexually reproducing animals can be induced by artificial means to develop parthenogenetically. The stimuli inducing artificial parthenogenesis are salts, weak acids, organic solvents, urea, sucrose and physical stimuli like temperature, electric shock or mere shaking. Parthenogenesis may be complete when there are no males in the life cycle and females develop exclusively by parthenogenesis. Examples, aphids, rotifers, lacerate, saxicola or caucasian rock lizard. Parthenogenesis is observed in some plants also. In Solanumni gram, the haploid egg develops into a haploid embryo and plant. Nicotine haploid embryos are formed from male gametes. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. In sexual reproduction, a new individual is produced by the combining of material from two parents. Parts of flower are stamen, pollen, pistil, stigma, style, pollen tube and ovary. Stamens and carpels are the reproductive organs. 
sepals are sterile and leafy and protect the unopened floral bud. Petals are sterile, brightly colored and serve as attractants. Sexual reproduction requires the fusion of an egg from the ovary with a sperm from a pollen grain. Fertilization in turn requires that the egg and sperm must meet. Pollen grain, microspore, transferred to the stigma of the flower develops into male gametophyte. In all angiosperms, development of female gametophyte is endosporous, that is, within the megaspore. About 80% of all plant pollination is biotic. Of the 20% of idiotically pollinated species, 98% is by wind and 2% by water. The process of formation of megaspores from the megaspore mother cell is called megasporogenesis. In certain plants, however, the fruits are formed without the act of fertilization. Such fruits are called parthenocarpic fruits and the phenomenon is known as parthenocarpy. Parthenocarpy is of great commercial value. Parthenocarpic fruits are used in the preparation of jams and fruit juices.